Hi, it's Lauren. I didn't mention my name in the first one, I don't think. Um, I'm really bored, so I'm going to teach you about the parts of the violin. Okay, so first part I'm going to tell you about is the neck. The neck is right here where I'm showing you. I don't know how to pinpoint it. So it's right here. It's this big, long thing. And you would hold on to it, wrap your hands around it like that like that so you kind of rest and on the neck or above it would be your strings you have the G D A E string so that's G D A E then up at the top in the nut box or peg box there are your pegs this is the G this is the D, this is the A, and this is the E. So you got G, D, A, E. Those are your pegs. Your pegs should only be used to tune your strings if they're really out of tune and really loose because you could over screw it or over loosen it and your strings could snap back in your face and it would really hurt. And then you have the scroll, which is this little nice little doodad at the top of the violin. It's kind of a tradition to be there. It's just one of those kind of things where you should have it on your violin. <laughs> then you have the bridge right here. I don't know if you can see that really well. It's right, right there. And the bridge supports the strings to where the sound stops and it goes into the violins and out your F holes right here. That's where the sound comes out of your violin. I didn't think so at first, but I listened to it when I was playing, and it does, because I'm a newbie at this. Then you have your tailpiece, and on the tailpiece is your fine tuners. There will be usually four for beginners, and I think it's like one or two for, you know, better players, intermediate, advanced. Your fine tuners are used to tune your chords just slightly like tweaking it that's why you're supposed to use these and not your pegs but if you turn these too much they go on into your violin and then you have to untwist them out and it's just a big mess then you have your chin rest right here it's where you rest your chin and then you have your shoulder rest right here shoulder rest where you rest your shoulder and usually a good shoulder rest is like foam type thingy because it's comfortable and you have to be in a resting position for you to play the violin correctly and the big side of the shoulder rest like if you have a newer one the thicker side or larger will be on the side of the chin rest see chin rest big side of the shoulder rest chin rest big side of the shoulder rest <clears throat> on that so when you play the violin with your bow the um when where you're where you should be playing is in between let me set that down is in between the bridge and the neck so it would be this hollow part right here okay this is the bow. Okay, number one rule, do not touch the hairs on the bow. Bad thing, unless you have synthetic, but I don't, I have horse hair. So don't ever touch these because supposedly your oils from your skin can like damage them. So don't touch them. I have a lot on accident. Okay, so you got the, the, tightener of the bow I don't I forget what you're supposed to call it and then there's something on the bow called the frog I I don't know where that is but this is the tightener right here it's at the bottom of your bow it should be and you turn it right to tighten your bow but never tighten it to where your bow is completely straight because that's bad you have to have a slight curve turning it to the left too much can break your bow and your Horse hairs can fall off of it or synthetic hairs. If you turn it too much to the right, your bow will snap. 
So you gotta make sure it has that just a tiny bit of a curve and it should be good. So when resting the violin on yourself, I choose to bring it up like that and I figure out where my shoulder is <laughs> and then I simply put my put my put my chin on it. I should be able to yeah, I, sh I just put my chin on it like that. Then I come over here and I have that now. Then I get my bow and you play. Sometimes not too well, but practice is perfect. So remember, keep trying, watch tutorial videos. That's how I learned all this stuff. And that's about it. Oh, always rosin your bow before you practice or play. And this is rosin. It's like some sort of amber-like thing. Uh, when you rosin your bow, I'd say you should rosin it five to six, five to like 12 times up and then down on the bow. You can go like that too, but going like that is better because you can keep track of it. There is a such thing as over rosining your bow and it won't make a very nice sound. And you can rosin your bow too little and it'll make a screechy sound. It's really, it hurts my ears and it probably should hurt yours too. So that and rosining the bow. Okay, yeah. And also every time you're done playing, it is important that you put your bow in a resting position by turning your bow screw thing all the way to the, not all the way, but to the left to where it bends like that because that is in the resting position and it doesn't put strain onto the bow. But I'm gonna be playing after this, so I need to tighten it back up. So remember, don't over rosin, don't under rosin. I know it sounds difficult, but you'll figure it out. It depends on how much you practice and how long you practice for. Also, so I, I said also, um, violin, I covered the bow. That should be it. I don't know how to tune my instrument yet, so hopefully you can figure that one out for yourself too. I don't know how yet my violin st still sounds pretty bad. Okay, so the end of the video. This video is dedicated to Nobi Prize. Yeah. Okay, so I want you, since you've watched the whole thing, to give me some stars down there. Oh yeah, right there. Ding, 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 baby. And then if you want to, you can see more of my videos by clicking the subscribe button that's over there-ish. Can you see it? Yeah, you, hopefully, hopefully you can see it. So, stars, subscribe. Yeah, thank you for visiting my channel.